Hey friends. So today we're going to talk about a hot topic when it comes to decluttering, and that is things that are given to us by people we care about who have very specific expectations on what we do with those items after they've passed. So this is something I see all the time as a decluttering coach and as a grief and trauma therapist. And um, one thing, you know, if this is a place where you find yourself, I want you to know that the pressure that you feel, the emotions that you feel that are attached to it um, are very, very normal. Okay. Some people find that it feels like a very heavy weight. Uh, it makes some people feel more sad. Um because and fearful because they don't want to make the wrong decision some people feel very angry with the way that these expectations were put on them and how they're supposed to move forward whatever it is that you feel and some people just completely detach but whatever it is that you feel about the expectations placed on the items that you have it's so incredibly normal okay so we're not first of all we're not going to place any judgment on ourselves um I was doing a call in a large group once, a decluttering call, on what is one item? Because I was curious, what is the majority of items that someone may have? Like if you have, I was, okay, let me be a little bit more clear. So I basically was saying to people, um, you know, what's this one item that really weighs you down that was gifted to you when someone passed that you inherited that you really just are struggling to make a decision about? And you guys, the vast majority, it was dining room sets. There was a woman on the call who had three. She had one in storage, one in her garage, and um, one, her, one in her house, right? So she was the last living relative on uh, both sides of her family. And so when people had died, they just kept giving things to her. And she felt, I think, figuratively and literally weighed down by these massive pieces of furniture and, you know, she didn't want to upset anyone by letting them go, even though obviously she's not going to be able to make use of three full dining room sets. Um, in one of my decluttering communities, there was a comment made by a woman that one of the things that she struggles with is that her mom really loves cookbooks. And her mom made her promise that when she died, you can't just get rid of them or give them away. Okay. So this is what I want to say to you with so much love. Okay, and so much compassion. Sometimes we need to agree to things with someone who um, is going to pass away, right? And then when we need to move forward after a death, we can't always continue to honor the things that we said we would do or, or wouldn't do. Okay, so if we take this cookbook analogy, um, you know, we live in a digital age where it's very easy now to access recipes online. Maybe there's some family recipes that she would want to keep on keep and she could keep copies of them if she chose to. But letting go of the cookbooks. OK, they were so important to mom. And that's a beautiful memory. OK, and maybe it makes her smile that it was important to mom. But that doesn't mean that they then need to have that kind of level of importance to us, right? You have full permission to let go of something that belonged to somebody else that they treasured, that they made you promise you would keep if it does not fit the age and stage and things that you like for the season of life that you are in now, okay? When we let go of these items, it doesn't change the relationship that we had with the person right? It doesn't change all of the amazing memories that we've had. And it certainly doesn't change the level of love that was exchanged between the two of you. So you know what? I mean, if you agreed that you were going to keep, you know, Aunt Edna's cross-stitching um, collection that she spent countless hours, you know, faithfully creating and then framed and hung all over her house and they meant the world to her and she's so proud of them. Okay, and I say this as a cross stitcher. That is beautiful. And when Aunt Edna passes away, if there's a piece or two you want to keep, if you wanted to keep all 15 pieces, you can keep all 15 pieces. But if you're like, you know what? I love Aunt Edna. I love the heart that she put into this, that she created this herself. 
but this just isn't me and it doesn't work in my space, you are not dishonoring or disrespecting by letting it go. Okay. It's really important that we decide for ourselves what is essential in our lifetime. Okay. For the season of life that we are in right now, what is essential to us? And then it kind of makes it a little bit easier to filter out all these other things that maybe we want to let go of. Okay. It's not always easy. The messages that we tell ourselves can really weigh us down. So you need to be careful kind of like what that inner dialogue is. Right. But I really want to see you live now in the present rather than constantly have being surrounded by too many things that are pulling you into the past to the point that you are not functioning well. Right. So there are definitely some things that we're going to keep from the past of people that we loved. Right. I work with people who have lost spouses, who have lost parents and who have lost children. Grief is a really, really tricky journey. Okay, it's unpredictable. There's no timeline for it. People all move through it differently. But when it comes to the decluttering, if you are leaning towards letting something go, you have full permission to do that. Okay, if you have any questions, definitely use the comments section. You can also reach out to me at declutteringcoachcanada at gmail.com and let's have a chat.